Hi everyone. I'm speaking about jury duty for a few minutes. You can click forward to see the painting. You might want to hear this. So recently I was called to jury duty, but I have a valid excuse. I cannot go. You may have a valid excuse of traveling, medical, you're in school, etc. But you need to send in your summons and give your reason. So can you go to jail for not responding to your summons? Apparently, yes, because the summonses are mailed and you're expected to fill out the form, answer the questions, sign it, date it, and then if you have your excuse, you send it in and then you need to receive your excuse in the mail. They do mail them and they say you're excused, but I didn't receive my excuse, so I needed to call the number and give my juror number and I was excused. So apparently if you you fail to respond and this is right from the website you can receive a fine not to exceed $500 and you might be jailed for up to 10 days not to exceed 10 days. So there was a juror in Florida who was actually on a trial and he fell asleep and overslept while he was at home and he overslept at home and didn't show up. I guess it was one of the second or third day, whatever. And it's in the news. You'll see it. He was put in jail for 10 days. That's a little excessive in my opinion. My next question is, do jurors need an attorney? Well, maybe because when I went to jury duty the second time, I was waiting in the room to see if I would be called to go to a potential trial a lawyer appeared and said, you would want a jury of your peers if you were arrested and, you know, some other bullshit that he said. So I'm thinking to myself, well, I'm never going to be arrested. And I'm sure most people aren't going to be arrested. And if I'm ever arrested, it will be a false arrest. So you might want to look at some of the First Amendment auditors and I'll leave a list of the ones that I watch. Some of them to me, in my opinion, have been falsely arrested. So you'll have a little lecture maybe by some lawyer trying to convince you that it's a good thing to be on jury duty. And then they offer you some donuts and coffee and tea. It's all free. Well, that's not a healthy breakfast. I don't eat that crap. So jury duty, don't entice me with sugar. So the next thing I want to say is when you're at jury duty, at least in Philadelphia, you will sit in a room with a group of people. I was called up with a group of people to a courtroom. It was for a criminal case of a drug dealer. They brought out the defendant, alleged criminal drug dealer, and they asked the people in the audience, that is the potential jurors, if we knew him or anyone else connected to the case, and they gave a list of names. So I wrote, and it was truthful, that I felt that one of the witnesses, I guess it was, or who it was a woman, that she had come in to my massage studio and got a massage from me, because I massaged the public. I didn't say you can't come in. I didn't know. I don't know people. I don't know what their background is. I give massages to people. I'm a licensed massage therapist. So I have, the jurors had to fill out a form and there were more questions to answer. But I know the one prosecutor was eyeing me down. He tried to stare me down, but I won. He was just a nasty person. I think they try to intimidate you. So I was not selected for that jury. But one of the questions that you need to be aware of, or two questions are, would you believe a police officer more than the defendant slash alleged criminal? Or would you believe the defendant slash alleged criminal more than the police officer? So if you think you're going to get out of jury duty by saying, yes, I would believe the police officer more, or the other one, the alleged, the prosecutor or the defendant's attorney would want you because you're more on their side. 
if you have a valid reason, and some of those reasons now further than the first part of the summons would be, the judge will ask, does anyone have any preconceived notions? So in other words, if you feel that bank robbers are all guilty no matter what, and you haven't even heard the trial, then they probably won't want you. The no side would want someone that's already formed an opinion about the defendant. So your duty as a juror is to hear the testimony and then make your decision. So there's always questions, questions, and more questions for the juror. And I say, what are my rights? I know they say it's the highest duty you can perform, but no one really wants to be there. Another thing further is to never say honestly or to be honest with you, because that sounds like you're not being honest in their their side of the, you know, their opinions. If you're saying, I'm going to, you're supposed to be honest. So never when you're speaking, if they ask you more questions, because the defendant's attorney can ask you as a potential juror questions. Now, this is the most important thing, why I'm making this video today. And I've had experience with lawyers in divorce court. And I had a bad attorney. I've had a couple bad attorneys, let's say that. So to me, now looking back, my experience is the most important words you can say to your attorney, and that's right when you hire him. Make sure you're hiring him first. And only because you don't want to scare him off. He doesn't want to represent you you know, if you're going to be aggressive. And so my opinion, strictly my opinion is the words to say are, make sure Mr. Attorney or Mrs. Attorney or Miss, make sure you represent me to the best of your ability. So when you say that you're setting the record straight, you're setting the atmosphere for him or her as your attorney to represent you. There is a lot of attorneys, they don't call you back for three days. I mean, who, who does that? So the point is, and I'm gonna just show you, move this up so my tablet doesn't go black. All right, so there's the map where the city of Philadelphia, you have to travel. I live further from the courthouse. I have to travel all the way downtown. And I think they take your phone, I'm not sure, but so what I'm saying is this whole experience actually might be very valuable to you. Sitting on a jury is really not that bad. I sat on a criminal case for four days. My employer actually paid me and I got 10, 10 or $11 a day or something like that. Maybe it was $9. I got $10. I was paid and you do receive your check pretty quickly. So don't be afraid about jury duty. I know no one wants to do it. And it's it's an inconvenience, especially if you think you're going to be called for a jury duty for six weeks or something. How many people can actually do that these days? People have to work. So make sure you establish a relationship. Tell your lawyer, make sure you represent me to the best of your ability, because some lawyers, they bow to the other side. Like when I was in divorce court, my lawyer bowed to the other lawyer because she was a former district attorney. And I'm thinking he wants favors or maybe he thinks he'll get a job. I don't know. He wasn't representing me properly. So you do, you do want to say that and you want to tell him that you want to be called back within a day, not three days, not four days. When you call him, if it's something important and they are going to charge you too. So remember that. So that's about it. I'm going to continue on with the painting. I hope this helped you in some way about jury duty, because to me, it's something that people don't want to do. It's very inconvenient. And we really can't have professional jurors because they would be targeted, especially in criminal cases. So we can't really know the identities of the jurors. We can't have professional jurors. I don't think that would work, but maybe it would. I don't, just my opinion right now. So just remember, you don't have to go to jury duty if you have a valid excuse. They can't force you if you're sick, you're out of town. That's a valid excuse. There's other excuses also, but you want to be truthful and honest and 
understand that once you serve on jury duty, you may not have to be called for another couple years or something like that. Um, I live in Philadelphia, PA. We have different rules probably than other cities. But all right, let's continue on with the painting. Thank you for listening. I hope this helped you. All right, so I'm beginning the painting. I want to say happy birthday. I always light the beeswax candles. Happy birthday to anyone with a birthday this week. So I'm doing a speedy graffiti pour. I have white and black and blue. And I have a purpose to this. The painting is jury duty. I'm using artist loft ready mixed pouring paint. And the blue is a combination of folk art, like a turquoise and a true blue, something like that. So if you've listened to the 10 minutes of jury duty, you'll understand this painting. So I've made a little guide and I'm going to show you now what I will do. I try to move fast because the paint does start to flow. We're not really painting the painting, we're pouring the painting. Well, the, and I'm speaking for the acrylic pourers that are on YouTube. Not a painting, not painting with a brush, you're just pouring. So I made some guidelines for white, black, white, black, etc. And I know that when you go to jury duty, you feel like you're in jail. Okay, the white and black kind of represent, you know, being in jail. And just go along the edges so I can take the guideline away. I do like this Artist Loft Ready Mix paint. So I bought it at Michael's. You can use a coupon. It's about $14 and half off and then 20% off perhaps. It helps because these are 16 ounces. If you use the smaller bottles, they're two ounces, like Deco Art and Folk Art and Apple Bar, they're two ounces. So it would be eight of the smaller bottles in here. So eight times about $2 is $16. So this is 14 and then half off keep it. It really helps because most of the time people use a lot of white. All right, so now I've added some silicone in my blue, which is a combination. I'm gonna move some of these out of the way. I'm gonna write the letters, jury. Duty, D U T Y.
And I use this particular blue because it matches the Philadelphia, Pennsylvania website that talks about jury duty. So now I'm going to tilt it. actually going to torch it. I put silicone in the blue and the black. Interesting. I like that, but I'm still going to tell that I think there's too much paint on here. So when you're tilting your painting, you're always making decisions about what you want to keep. I'm getting some cells over here, which I like. I like that part. Let's see what happens on this side. Something about it, I like it like just like this. I might just tilt it over a teeny bit, come back. I'm just gonna let it sit. Maybe come down this way. Hmm. Can you guess what that says? No, you really can't tell. Maybe you see the R, the Y. What is this? I don't know, but that's the point. You tilt your painting. It's kind of cool. Just go a little bit. I think that's going to be it. Maybe down this way just a little bit. All right, I'll tell uh, Torch again, and that'll be it. Thanks so much for watching. I really love you guys. It's so wonderful that you tuned in. I hope I helped you with your jury duty, and I hope you like my painting. And have a great day.